Hey, I know you. You're that jaywalking punk anarchist. Hello, this is the Radical Reviewer, and welcome back to The Puppy Corner, <coughs> the show where we take a look at children's books with a radical lesson to teach. Today, we're taking a look at Animal Crackers by the Brothers Cranach. Just look at this uh, book cover here. We've got animals looking into cages filled with men in suits. The cages are labeled politicians, oil executives, developers, and lobbyists. Something tells me this is going to be a fun romp. Let's see what kind of things it says on the back of the book. The goal from the start was to create something along the lines of an adult Dr. Seuss book. At first glance, it might seem child-friendly, with all the pretty little animals. And what kid doesn't love animal crackers? But then you open it, and the truth is revealed. This book is not for kids. It is brutal and vulgar and not for the faint of heart. But neither is what we're doing to the environment. And that's the point. Though if I may take a step back and recant a prior statement, this book is for kids. They need to see what we're doing wrong. While the change needs to start with us, it must continue with them. Well now doesn't that sound exciting? Now this book is a bit longer than what I would normally cover here in the Puppy Corner, so I'm not going to read this thing cover to cover, and instead, as a dog, I will totally go against the point of the text and expose my speciesism and only read about the animals in the canine family. So let's jump into it. Coyote. And here we see a painting of a coyote and it says revenge in the eyes. You were here long before we encroached on your home. You were happy to stay in a range of your own. But when Western expansion brought man on the prowl, your surrender defied with a resonant howl. We have hunted you down and collected your pelt. It's a shame that you can't make us feel how that felt. But your vengeance has come by a quieter means. You survive and expand and adapt new routines. One of few to be able to broaden your range. Your adaptable nature greets welcome to change. From the trees of the woods to the cities of man, you can thrive and survive on diversified land. You have lived in the wilderness back in its prime, and have even called Central Park home for a time. But if humans who claim to be so advanced were placed in your paws, they'd be shitting their pants. For uncountable men have been lost in the wild, and a countless times more in the streets they've defiled. Yet the cunning coyote can make it just fine. Perhaps we're just stupid, or maybe just blind. For to us, something different is something to fear. The alternative means we do not want to hear. And the stubbornness found at the foot of our grave is the lesson you'll teach to the pups of the brave. For the earth that is ever entrusted to man is being destroyed by a treacherous hand. If we can't even live in the world we create, then you might as well conquer these segmented states. And here we see a picture of some capital grounds all dilapidated and on fire with coyotes running rampant. Cool, cool. Wolf. Here we see a picture of some wolves in helicopters with rifles and a bunch of shot up people on the ground below. The magnificent wolf feared and misunderstood with a criminal mind that is up to no good. They have murdered your livestock and eaten your kids. Are you effing? Uh, let's fix that. Okay, where were we? They have murdered your livestock and eaten your kids. Are you effing ignorant believing in this? So to this day, they're slaughtered with no end in sight. And I fear that the wolves may be losing this fight. For the wolf wants to live, but some won't let them be. Like the ignorant ranchers and b-word Sarah P. With her aerial hunting that's allowed to occur, giving inhumane deaths through a law that's been blurred. Though perhaps it's a backhanded compliment there from the pussy-ass hunters who shoot from the air. Afraid to go down because they know the wolves pissed and will rip off their balls if they fired and missed. For if we will not help, then it's up to the wolf to fight and to claw to remain here on earth. We must offer protection to give them a chance to replenish their numbers for life to advance. For the wolves' mere desire is to live and to roam, and all that's required is a place to call home. One would think its demand wouldn't be much to ask, to have land undisturbed and a vastness to bask. But pariahs of nature who do not belong grow sparse in the silence that lacks the wolf's song. And we have a uh, pup asking the mother, Mommy, why do people hate us so much? Aww. 
Seal. They're uh, they're water dogs. They they count. It's a it's a water dog, water canine. Um, we have a bunch of uh, seals clubbing baby people. What a mess. Whew. What a cute baby seal, so precious and free, who was born on the beaches belonging to me. So adorably peaceful, I cannot abstain from my hackpick frenzy to bash out its brain. Club it once, it still moves. Hit that effer again. Okay, it is dead. Now move on to its friend. It is hard to believe that this scene could be true, but it is, absolutely. Would I lie to you? It is written to law they are not to be brushed, but to strike on the forehead till skull has been crushed. And for what do we get but some meat on our bones, and a fur for some b-word to parade that she owns? As the parents of children, how much would you pay for the quick execution of men who had slain? Little Johnny and Becky asleep in their bed, with their dreams of tomorrow snuffed out in their head. It's a natural vengeance you'd hope to atone for the pain and the grieving your family was shown. If the tables were turned and the seals could fend, for themselves to defend all their families and send as a message by clubbing to get through our head that this murder should stop if our babies were dead. And now we get a close-up of seals with uh, babies with bastion heads. Oh my. Whew. Okay. Um, great stuff. You know, uh, it's funny how I stumbled upon this book. I was working at a thrift store and a woman came up to me and was like, <clears throat> Excuse me, talking dog behind the register. And I said, um, I have a name, and I gestured to my name tag. And she said, well, I found this book in the children's section, but look at it, it's definitely not a children's book. It even says on the back that it's not a children's book. Which technically isn't true. I mean, we looked at the back of the book at the beginning of this video, and it initially states the book isn't for children, but then clarifies that it is. A anyways, so I flipped through the book and I thought that it looked interesting, and I set it aside to buy on my break. I kind of like books like this. I put it under a category I'd call shocking coffee table books. You know, something to leave out when company's coming over, especially conservative family members. Something to really knock their socks off. The art in this book is really amazing, and if you've noticed, it's a recreation of famous paintings. Oops, I'm a poet and I didn't even realize it. Um, perhaps you'd recognize this one that is a recreation of Starry Night or uh, this one that is a recreation of Saturn devouring his son. But that's about the art. What about the other half of this picture book? The writing. Well, I like the rhyming and such, uh, but I do wish the book was focused more on systemic damage to the environment, oil spills, the island of plastic in the ocean, carbon emissions and such, rather than these personal attacks such as shooting wolves or clubbing seals. But I suppose for this text to be about switching the roles of humans and animals, these direct one-to-one -one examples work better. My biggest problem with the text has to be the cursing, particularly the slurs. I understand these are emotionally charged topics, but the imagery in the context is shocking enough on its own. If anything, the cursing takes away from that, especially heavily loaded terms like the B word or the R word, which do more harm than good even if you're attempting to weaponize them for a good cause. All in all, I'd say this book is a fun romp to leave on the coffee table to shock friends and family with its interesting what-if-the-shoe-was-on-the-other-paw type premise regarding the treatment of animals. But I would recommend covering up the slurs like I've done. Anyways, that does it for this edition of the Puppy Corner. As always, I'd like to thank my wonderful patrons. Your support allows me to purchase dog food and books and toys and dog insurance and allows me to support other creators I couldn't otherwise support, so I appreciate you folks a lot. And if you like what I do here and you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash radical reviewer. If you're interested in radical theory, looking for a book recommendation or whatever, you can get your radical reviews here with the radical reviewer. Thanks for watching.